People who let their mom count to zero. What happened after? She's currently on 1 slash 1125899068426246224. I'll let you know if she ever gets there. If anyone needs a reference, that's 1 over 250. If your mom counts one number every second and has been halving the fraction each time, she hasn't even been counting for a full minute yet. R slash the did the math. She was bluffing, but only the first time. Well if the comment section is any hint of what happened. She was counting again, so you won't run away as she grabbed the wooden spoon. Oh man. I'm old now, but that brings back an old memory. When I was born I already had 5 older brothers and mom had an 8 year break from having children. Then surprise. Nibbles McGiblet came along. As the only girl, I sometimes heard stories of how bad my brothers had been when they were my age. Probably told to keep me from getting into similar trouble. And I definitely remember my mom saying the only time she ever used anything to spank any of us. It was a wooden spoon on my second to oldest brother. Apparently it broke as she spanked him with it, he was a teen, and it left a mark and she vowed not to do that to any of the other kids for any reason, and then didn't. Until. I had hair down to my butt and was the only girl, and at one point I thought that brushing my hair with a round brush would make it curly. No, it made it tangled. My mom spent a couple of hours working that knot out and then swatted me with the brush. Edited to add to the person who thought it was appropriate to call my daily loved and now deceased mother disgusting. Go talk to your own mother that way if you really feel that is appropriate but keep your opinions of my mother out of it. She did a great job raising six kids all by herself after our father died. The same way she swatted me with the brush is the same way that if we told her a funny joke she might swat us on the shoulder with her hand while laughing. A swat is not a slap, a hit, a punch, or a spank. It's a swat. Grow up and quit being so cruel. There's no benefit for anyone that comes from you disrespecting my dead mother. Instead maybe go call your own mom or give her a hug and tell her you love her. Turn that frown upside down and get out of your miserable head and spread some joy to her while you can. My mum's done this to my brother. He had no countdown but was pre-warned. Forgot what he did, but it was hilarious then I laughed some more as she projectiled the brush at him. It hit him and broke back then my brother was granny's favorite. So he threatened to tell my gran my mum tried to call his bluff saying he wouldn't. When he did my gran went what did you do to piss her off to deserve it ha. Huh? Now he's 26 he torments the crap out of our mum, so she just goes to find the brush, and he runs off. <laughs> Wooden spoon impact. Edit, I see a lot of people asking if I'm Italian, Irish, or even Polish. Nope, American, but the art of the wooden spoon was taught through many generations in our family. I'm just thankful I never got the belt. In my story, my mom pulled out a wooden spoon and hit the table with it to be very menacing. Unfortunately for her, she hit the table hard enough that the spoon snapped and a round part went flying off. My sister and I, two years apart, burst out laughing, and my mom couldn't help but laugh too. I don't honestly remember her using slash threatening a wooden spoon after that. <laughs> Alright, I'm coming in late here but this reminded me of the time I went the distance with my mom. My whole life we've rarely argued, and during my entire upbringing we only had a few actual fights. All of which were 100% my fault. The point I'm making is that my mom is a really sweet, genuine person who did an amazing job raising two boys on her own. When I was 12 I had a bad day and got home in a mood. I wasn't quite looking for a fight per se, but I was being a crabby snappy negative jerk. Mom put up with it for a while and then had enough. I can't recall the catalyst, but she wanted me to do something and I refused. So the count came. 3. 2. And I interjected. 1. There was a stunned silence for a moment, and then she looked at me with rage in her eyes. I I I'm sore I I I I. I pleaded but I had crossed a line and punishment was coming. She moved so fast, like a blur, and I was frozen. I was taller than her, but she scooped me up, thrust me in a chair, and told me to, wait there. Her voice had both ice and heat, how is that possible? She came back with a bar of ivory soap which she jammed into my mouth. It was gross, with high notes of bitter soap taste, but also a strange sickly sweetness that made me want to gag. And that's how I know that Dr. Pepper tastes like ribitacin with ivory soap, a splash of prune juice and carbonated water. 
I think I got grounded as well, but the fear she instilled really did the trick. I'm gonna count again. 5.4 3 2 1 and a half 1 and a quarter 1 and 1 eighths Oh bless you, I'd forgotten I played that game with my parents. The first time I heard, 2, 1 and a half, 1 and a quarter, I asked why the numbers weren't getting smaller anymore, and got my first fraction lesson. That time it was an effective tool, because I was so fascinated by the concept of fractions, that I stopped fighting leaving the pool. The game was a reward of sorts. When I thought I'd been good enough to get an extra minute before bed, in the bath, etc. After mom or dad got to two, I'd say, one and a half. I didn't always get to play. On days when we had a minute to spare and I'd behaved, the response was, one and a quarter, and the game was on. We went back and forth, saying a number smaller than the one before. When I messed up and accidentally went up numerically, the game was over, and I had to do whatever it was they were counting for. They made it harder as I got older, jumping random intervals, but they stopped when I finally completely understood fractions and could go on for hours. Dad later used the game to teach me how negative numbers work, but I caught on to that one quickly. Number games like that are also fun in the car. <laughs> Hardest thing as a parent is following through on punishing these kids you love more than anything else in the world. A colleague of mine had three small kids. Mother never followed through on disciplinary threats, so the kids ignored hers. Father gave them one warning, then always followed through, they listened to his threats. I saw it in action a few times, the kids would ignore mum, and eventually dad would step in and bam. Instant compliance. Both of them absolutely adored their kids, but dad had the right idea on this matter. As the dad in a house like this, it f***ing sucks. You always have to be the one to dole out the punishment, and in reality, you end up having to punish more because of the times they flat out refuse to listen to the other parent. And of course as soon as the punishment is over, runs to the other parent for reassurance and cuddles. It's no fun always being the bad guy, even if it is just time out. My ears are still ringing. Seriously, I got a minor case of tinnitus. 100%. It was my grandma, because mom didn't give warnings like that. Grandma is tiny, so we didn't worry. Normally we would step in line at 2. Once, AO and 13, I decided to stand my ground and her little arm made contact with the side of my head with the speed of a timber rattler. That day was rough. We learned that running from her was much more effective. Then, she learned that we were not worthy of warnings. I'm 6 feet 5 inches. My nana is about 5 feet 2 inches. One day I was being a smart ass to her and my cousin. She told me to stop picking on my cousin, or she'll smack me one. I kept going. My nana came up beside me and asked me to steady her while she leaned on me. I didn't think anything of it until she smacked me in the back of the head with her slipper and said I told you I'd smack you one if you didn't cut it out. I was 27 at the time. I'm loving this. You made my morning. Not my mother, because she rarely disciplined me and my siblings, but my grandma, oh no oh. When I went to zero, I got her classic little old Asian lady move, a sock filled with pennies thrown at me at speeds I never thought possible. Shit hurt it. Every time your kids swear, out a penny in your sock and soon you'll have a weapon to be. No it was put a quarter in your no yelling sock. I used to not know what would happen when I counted to ten. My son has let me get there once, and it ended with me literally wrestling him into his pajamas and him going to bed without getting to read any books. He was very upset, and I felt like a terrible person, but he hasn't let me go past 7 since that day. She reset me to the factory settings. A hard reset as we called it. I can physically feel pain just reading these comments. They triggered my childhood trauma. Parents in India can be complete a-holes bold of you to assume that they are alive to tell their story. Yes, I'm actually dead right now. Yay, my mom got to zero, and I died from fear. Then she got super angry, and started counting for me to come back to life. So I resurrected the cup, and never got to zero again. But didn't your mom beat you, after you became alive just because you died? Like how can you die? She sure did, but imagine if she got to zero. She would beat my dead ass dead. I woke up in the back of a wagon heading to Skyrim. Hey, you. 
You're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Walked right into that imperial ambush, same as us, and that thief over there. The empire was all nice and lazy, before you stormcloaks came around. I cold stolen that horse, and been halfway to Hammerfell. We're all brothers and sisters in binds now, thief. <laughs> Weaklings, my mother would count, after I was already whooped to give me time to stop crying, or I'll be whooped again. Stop crying, or I'll give you something to cry about for real. Yep, that was the one that shut me up. There was nothing hollow about that threat lol. My dad did that once, when I was 5. I never knew you can best the tear ducts out of someone through their ass and back of the head. Never cried since. Got my first pube a few days later. My grandma was the sweetest woman in the world until you did something stupid. We grew up in the south and she had this bigger sweeping willow tree in the front yard. She would prolong the experience by making us, me and my two brothers, go pick our own weapons of torture from the willow tree and clean the leaves off. She called them switches. Often, she would have me go pick the switch from the tree instead of my brothers. I was the youngest, she died when I was only 6 or 7, and I didn't understand that longer willow vines equals more pain. So I'd pick the longest vines possible, cause I enjoyed the sound they made when I swung them through the air. She could crack those willow vines off your ass like a damble whip. If any of us laughed at our brother getting it, she'd always say I'll give you something to laugh about and proceed to alternate blows between us. We didn't find it funny anymore after that usually. Short story time. Raised in a nation household, near Tiger Mom all that stuff. Can't even remember what it is exactly I did to set her off, but she turns on her usual rage face and starts staring me down. Next thing I know she tells me to go to her room and grab her leather belt and that I have 5 seconds to get it or else shit is gonna happen. For the first time in my life, I decided to take a stand. First I told her I didn't want to because I'll just get hurt, but the countdown continued and by the time she reached one I laid down a flat and calm no. She tried to hide it, but I can tell she was absolutely stunned. You know that saying I wasn't thinking that far ahead? If you were to translate that into a facial expression then you'll get a face at that moment. After about another 5 seconds of silence she just told me to go to my room. I learned two things that day. It might not always pay off, but it's always better to try and stand up for yourself. Lock your doors, because the fight ain't ever over. She threw a flashbang into my room then proceed to whip me with her belt. Did I mention she was military? Wait she legit threw a flashbang? Holy duck dude, that mom doesn't mess. <laughs> my mom stopped the car and told little me to get out. So I did. She drove 20 feet up the road, but to little me, I thought she was driving away forever. I definitely stopped being a little shit after that and never forgot. I think I was about 7 and she never really punished my siblings and I beyond grounding. So I must have been really bad that day lol. Subscribe and leave a like. Please.